Good morning, afternoon, evening or night, whenever you're watching this, welcome. Winter storms and sustained torrential downpours raised the river level here considerably, about two metres above its current, still fairly high level, and without fail that means there'll be new old things to find here. After the peak level, rain carried on falling, just not quite as hard. The river level dropped, but very, very slowly. I waited and waited patiently. And just the night before it was looking like getting back down to a safely accessible level, it snowed. Heavily. I got snowed in. Couldn't come out to play. I live down a country track that doesn't get gritted, ices up easily, so I had to wait precious days and will not now be the first to visit here after the floodwaters receded, as I had hoped to be. But I am still hopeful that there'll be fun and interesting things to find. Let's get down there and see. Last visible remnants here of the recent cold spell. And a January sky, a very short day. The sun very low, it's about midday and the night is already fast approaching. I started already, the camera glitched and I think I've lost that footage. Picked a few pieces of plastic, some blue and white pottery, some corroded copper, a bit broken bottle stopper and a fossil. The copper wire down there is tempting to me. I'll get it when I'm a bit less trepidatious. The water is cold. It's full of snowmelt water, maybe three or four degrees Kelvin. Nah, Celsius, 49-ish Fahrenheit. And well, that there looks like gold. I think it might be, which sets this lark off to a great start. And my best guess is that it was part of an earring. Maybe modern, maybe old, I don't know enough to say, and I would guess at it being 9 carat gold. So not really very valuable, but if it does turn out to be gold, then that's the first time I've found some gold jewellery on film. Awesome. Kutnau's powder. A patent medicine. I have heard of it, or rather read about it. Um, stomach settling powder, I think, but haven't found one of these before. I do really like finding patent medicine bottles. Quack medicine is a fascinating part of human history, and it's present. Ow, it is actually so cold it hurts a bit. Quickly, quickly get it over and done with. 4 degree air temperature I find actually quite okay. 4 degree water drains my body heat real fast. Looks like a bead. Ah, no, it's a button. A tiny, tiny little thing. Who or what would have a button like this? Surely it's too small for most fingers to manage, so a decorative button? Faceted red and glass, a nice little find. Now what else? The spark plug. Dropped the button. More brass, encrusted. Let's try and break some of that off. A little bit better, I'll sort it later. Anyway, it's a weighing scale weight. Probably two ounces. That looks kinda nice. Mm, don't think I can really do much with this, so I'll leave it for someone who thinks they can. I think I see a marble. 
Oh yes, a nice sky to baby blue and white swirls. Always happy to find a marble. I lost my own long ago. Some pretty good finds on this little beach, which is probably because it was still underwater until this morning. Dropped the marble this time, cold, quantified fingers. And yes, I know that's not a word. I've also dropped the button again without even noticing. At least it's easy to spot again. I need to get these small finds safely into a bag as soon as possible. My fingers are not working well after their brief plunge into cold, cold water. Second fossil of the day, and it's also a Lepidodendron stigmaria fossil. Pretty much the only well-defined fossil type I find in the rivers and streams around here, and it's unusually flat, either a squashed piece or a fragment of the widest diameter stigmaria I've ever found. That is... Not as interesting as it first looked. It's the handle of a tureen type thing, maybe a butter dish. But I still quite like it. I could take the pointy bits off with a dremel, drill a hole, sink a thread, and it could be a very nice draw handle. Or a handle to open a cabinet of curiosities. Yeah, I really like that idea. Always worth checking around and under where you set your bags down. Not to everyone's taste, but brass is an always welcome find for me, as is the tiny glass button. Cannot hope to get all the plastic out of a place like this, not without a team of volunteers and a truck to pick up loads of bin bags full. I hope a little pick does get organised for this site sometime. I would happily volunteer. The local council, though, they're planning how to stop or slow the erosion here, a vast engineering project, and in the meantime they don't seem all that interested in small and cheap to run interim measures. I've suggested to them that they could put some bins out for mudlarks to fill with plastic and lead, and some of the other dangerous things that are really bad to let go into the river, and nothing but a knife missing the handle. and a razor colourfully corroded. The central frame of a carriage clock, I think, around which the clockwork works. Should I, shouldn't I incorporate clockwork into the curiosity cabinet that's invading my thoughts now? Hmm, this looks very much like a gas regulator, which is a reminder that I should probably come up with more ideas for what to do in the summer with my forge. Suggestions, of course, are most welcome. And it's brass, so of course I'll take it. I'll take this too. Isn't it just the most gorgeous colour of glass? I'm thinking of breaking it up and hoping that parts of it are thick enough to survive being put through my rock tumbler and turned into pseudo-sea glass. I want to make a lamp in the shape of a dragon's head, with scales made of sea glass and pseudo sea glass. I think I have enough, but not enough of this colour, only a few very small pieces. Oh, I'm pretty sure they were all going to land about there, and me being here meant three of them stayed in the air. Hope they're reunited soon. Anyway, I found this nice lens of a water's edge might make a good dragon's eye. And just showing this, bottle broken by ice, about a hundred years survived in the ground and one cold snap on the surface breaks it. Still cold clumsified, my fingers. Oh, a happy reunion. There's words on that big chunk of pottery. Ah yes, botanical brewers of Silston. That's where an ex-girlfriend of mine once lived. And much more recently, but still maybe two years ago, I did film a stream river walk there. Had some interesting bridge architecture and a nice weir. Can't actually remember much of what I found relic-wise. Bells. I did find some bells on that outing. 
I don't think I'll wade much in the central current today. Even this gentle flow is pulling the heat from my legs. Faster flowing would be faster freezing. I'm actually a bit glad that I'm not seeing much that makes me want to reach my arm in there. Ah, there it is. I think it's a Cessna. Looks like lead. Let's get that out. Oh, okay, that's pewter, I think, and a pern stem. A little single flower vase may have been part of a much bigger display piece. Some tin, which I do want for casting bronze, but other things like antimony, bismuth, copper and lead. So it'll go into my box of special scraps for potential future videos, extracting desired metals out of things I found. Tin out of this, copper out of verdigris, gold off of plated things. My, I am lining up a lifetime of video plans, and it's still so much easier getting out into nature and finding the ingredients than settling down and filming indoors. I think that's because I haven't yet got my lighting set up quite to my liking, but I am still aiming to film indoors at least one day a week this year, crafting mostly, and that's about enough of the cold water for the moment. My legs are getting cold. Footprints. I knew I wouldn't be the first back at the cliff face, but perhaps I might be the first back in the water, and I will be back in the water when I've warmed up a bit. My expectations for finding things now on this foreshore are limited. I'll film if I find something. Second little marble, not as bright nor as colourful, but whether clay or glass I still love finding them. This one is small enough that it might be a clay baking bean rather than a marble, but it's close enough. The clay is sticky, which means this is not going to be elegant. There's slim to no chance I'll be able to keep my camera arm steady, so traverse montage I think. <laughs> It's a berry, and my fingers. Wow, I'm not used to them being like this. I guess I'll have to concentrate my attentions on slightly bigger things. That'll do. A brass ring of some sort, and some cranberry glass. Now this I'm not sure about. It's clear glass with a coloured layer. Don't know if the colour makes that layer less durable, but might put it in the rock tumbler and find out. A bit of wire. Oh, there it is. It's a piece of brass that was part of a gas lamp setup, and I found this about ten days ago. I was here just after mostly recovering from a Christmas time illness. I was still a bit fatigued and a little bit wobbly. I did film a video, found a few nice bits, but I have already decided that this video will be coming out before that one, because, well, I'm just far more enthusiastic about this one. The light is nicer, the finds have been better, and so far I'm feeling pretty good today, as opposed to the last time when I should probably have stayed home, as evidenced by leaving some of my finds. Ooh, now that looks like quite a nice marble. Wow, these cold, clumsified fingers. That is quickly becoming one of my favourite made-up words. I will try not to overuse it. And yes, this is probably one of the top five prettiest marbles I've ever found. Tendrils of milky glass through clear, but there's a slight bluish hint to the milky glass, and the red is adding pinkish, purplish notes. Probably not shown off all that well, but I'm well happy with this marble. Poisonous, Sanisar. It's one I've got already, and not all that old. 1940s, I think. Maybe even 50s. I think I'm warmed up again now. Enough for a little bit of a wade. Hmm, going to plunge my hand in again for... 
copper. Maybe I really shouldn't today, not for such common things, save for body heat, for special things, or the moving the lead. Big chunk of brass. The hesitation and stabbing down quickly and out quickly does not lessen the cold shock much. Right, I'm out. Got to get warm before I get back in. This looks like it might do well in the rock tumbler. Smashed into smaller bits, of course. Don't think I've got more than a few pieces of actual orange glass. mother of pearl button. Right, this area is usually a bit of a metal patch and most of it will be in the water. I'm not ready for that again yet, so I'll find what there is to find on the land. Oh, there's a hole in it. One more than there's supposed to be. It's a shame, I quite like jars like this. Some brass. Most of it that I found in this shape has been from windows of early cars or caravans. This one, no, it's not got a channel for the glass, so I don't know. Okay, there's a lot of lead in the water, which will still be here next month if I can't manage the cold, but I'm going to try. That looks like a lead toy soldier, maybe? Deceiver, it's a nugget. Oh well. No gravity, my ancient enemy. Do not take my button. Nugget. Okay, okay, there's a lot more lead and there's a lot more cold than I've got the resources today to deal with. So I shall wander and look and try to limit my hand immersion today to retrieving things that I think are actually interesting. And I shall come back another day when it's warmer for the lead. Ordinarily I love searching these little patches, but without moving the chunky things out of the way I won't find it easy to see the small interesting things. Nah, can't see anything much. Oh, I see something. Looks like an enamel sign. Ornaments. Pure tea. I think I know someone who'd like that. Nice. Shame there's not more of it, but it's still a pretty cool find. There's another button. Another mother of pearl button. So shiny. I'm pretty sure is a silver chain. A fob watch chain, I think, and solid silver, I think, by the weight of it. 
I'm sorry, I've got too many other things in my hand to really show it off. What a day though, gold and silver. Wonder if I'll find some bronze too. That looks like a coin. It is a golden hind halfpenny. Not all that old. Well, this says it was issued in 1938, so it'll be George the Sip from the back. Yep, left facing the current king's grandfather. Coins will soon come out with Charles facing left too. Right, going to decant these finds to the pile on the shore and retrieve the sign which I threw from the middle of the river. Now, how am I supposed to follow finding almost an ounce of silver and a coin in one little clip? I'll do the thing that's got even more value to me. So far today I've found gold, silver, coins, marbles, bottles, buttons, fossils, and now beads. Okay, they're plastic beads and trash really rather than treasure, but they can be checked off the mudlarking bingo sheet for today. Just missing an alley gob, a nice clay pipe, and some nice blue and white. Not going to find them on this beach, but I might find the pile of things I accumulated on my way over here. Mostly copper or brass things, not sure what the little ball thing is. But everything else is identifiable or past any possibility of it. Found this fossil too after stone skipping. It's Lepidodendron stigmaria, pretty much the only type of fossil I find around here. And 30 years of finding them has not yet bred contempt for them in me. Back across the river, have a last look around and pick out some more lead. Then traverse a tricky bit to get to the last third of the cliff face. expanded deep and sticky clay that I'll sink right into and may never be seen again. And the shore route is a hellscape of very slippery clay and iron oxide bleeding out of the cliff. That slip mark was my first attempt. This is my second. Well, now I'm on it, under the overhang. It doesn't look too bad. Okay then, no footprints. Might be the first across that gap since the water's receded. And first find here is a nice piece of plate. Willow pattern, needed for a project and very welcome, though not quite as welcome as other less common patterns would be. And as I walked onto this section, thought I might have seen a coin. Yes, think so, but it's quite corroded. Possibly too corroded to really get an accurate ID. 
think it's a penny, think it'll be 1900 to 1930, but could easily be wrong. Now, what else? A nice thick piece of cobalt blue glass for my rock tumbler, and a lens, possibly from spectacles. Nah, it's absolutely flat, so maybe not even a lens. A bit of brass, kind of peg-shaped, and that looks like something I had as a child, but mine was made of plastic and came in a box of breakfast cereal, a miniature battleship missing its stern section, and this, a decorative something, an alloy of lead, I think. It's very heavy for its size and not brass, even though there's hints of verdigris. Any ideas what it was? Now the good little run of fine seems to have run its course, not seeing anything else. Nothing poking out of a cliff, so time to check beneath the bags I so carelessly put down. Nothing beneath that one, and under the rucksack, I see something. A marble. Oh, it's cracked and chipped, but it is without doubt the first amber marble I've ever found. I didn't even know they existed. Awesome, into the bag before I drop it. Copper square nail, and a bit of copper wire. A little bit of litter picking. Polystyrene, a blight of waterways. Oh my goodness, it's an onion bottle. Not really, but I'm pretty sure that the design of this was inspired by maybe a mid-18th century iteration of an onion bottle, and that makes this an antique homage to deeper antiquity. I like it, and of course it's likely the nearest I'm going to get to finding a genuine onion bottle, so I think this is one of the few bottles I'll take today, not counting of course all the plastic ones. That looks like it's something. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was unexpected. A doll's house toilet. Don't know if these are rare, but it's the only one I've found. Haven't even found anything that might have been a partial piece of one. It's stamped foreign, so German made, interwar period probably. Obviously it's missing a few bits, a header tank, flush chain and toilet seat. Think I could make those things. And yes, of course, it's going to be gifted to Kate and Fleur of the miniature world of Kitten Caboodlers, as well as mudlarking with Kitten Caboodlers. Blue and white, a bit of a vegetable serving dish, looks like. Oh, it's not willow pattern, it's a romantic style scene, possibly copied from a painting. It does look a bit familiar. Athena, Bisto. Should be enough to find the pattern, and maybe from that I can find if it is from a painting, and another piece of blue and white. Finally worked my foot free, so now let's get back on dry land and see. For anyone particularly observant, I had a different coat on in that last clip. I thought I'd take off the big warm jacket, which has one arm quite soaking wet, put on my waterproof instead, and now the warm jacket is back on top of the waterproof, which is at least keeping the wet sleeve away from my arm, and I feel a lot warmer as a result. It's a stick. Stick can certainly look like copper pipe through 12 inches of water, and the three quarter light of early twilight. I think it's about time I started making my way that way. I want to wander down to the beach and see how things are there. I probably won't have good light for looking for things by the time I get there, but there might be a sunset and I might find something worthwhile. Won't if I don't go soon. Means very little to most people, but I still love finding copper square nails. They can be several hundred years old, and I've never found a way of finding out if they actually are, beyond seeing if they look handmade, like this one does. 
a little curly piece of lead. by the looks of it. Might be the first time I've found one and I think it's brass so I think I'll take it. Right, this is the next bit of my route up there. It's not going to be elegant, so should I film it or not? Ah, uh, go on, I can edit it out if it's really bad jerky footage. There's no firm foothold on this slope, it's very loose material. Black cat worn to white, with the creepiest eyes of any figurine I've found. Just the pupils worn off, I think. It's got a small hole in the back, but I still quite like it, and I'll take it. Maybe try and make something with it someday. From here on, I shan't be looking as much. Just trying to get safely out of here, so I can hit the beach before the light completely goes. Time for a trigger warning, maybe. I've just spotted something even creepier than the cat figurine. Ready? Here we go. Must be plastic to be so squashed. Yeah, plastic. But still a most impressively grotesque find. It might be nine and a half months till Halloween, but for some of us it's an all year round state of mind. Nope to that, but this, that I found before switching the camera back on, I think it's a yes. It's quite unusual, a joke, without a handle, and it doesn't look like it ever did have a handle attached. There's no sign of breakage whatsoever. Doll's house thing though, so taking it for kid and caboodlers. I'm pretty sure I passed through this exact spot and I didn't spot this first time through. Another marble. It's a good day for them today. Nice red and white candy stripe, and it's pretty good condition. Now, onwards. Oh, my, okay. Got a look now up the cliff face, on the off chance that there's actually a whole bunch of marbles being weathered out, because there's another one down here. Another candy stripe, red and white. Smaller one this time got to wonder if they went into the dump together, so close to each other as they were. I think I'm disturbing the geese again. They're in a central pool which wasn't here last time I was. This beach is changing so much these days. The sun is setting and the light will very soon be gone, so it's going to be as fast a search of this beach as I can, while trying to upset the geese as little as possible. From blue and white, a nice church scene. I will certainly fill my bag with plastic from here, but I'm quite happy to take a little copper wire too. 
Sorry, geese and ganders. Didn't mean to startle. Now, just trying to figure out which way to go will be least upsetting for them. Mm, this way, I think. Oops, disturbed a crow. Maybe I shouldn't really be here. Twilight is settling down time for birds. Teapot though. Copper or brass, not sure which. But happy to find it, happy to take it. Don't really want the sand that's inside. We can carry things. Actually, not quite as empty as I'd like yet. Goose, going to see me off if I get too close. I don't think I'd find much if I insisted on exploring the inner part of this beach. I'm not spotting much. Blue and white though. I'm not sure if there's anything much going on in this pattern. It might just be floral. Midnight in Paris, perfume bottle quite broken. They are very fragile, these. Don't think I've managed to get one home and cleaned out without it breaking yet. Nice colour. Don't know if the camera's catching this, but sunset on the water, of being able to see all the way through its crystal clear depths, it's quite a magical effect. A small island hopping across to the beach of broken things. Some host pipe. I think I can carry this out of here. And in the water on the way, I found this, a nice decorative brass picture hook, from a time when there were picture rails high up on people's walls. Found them before, but never as decorative. It's so dense with fragments, shards and shirts. And if there was light enough to see, I think I'd be finding some nice small finds here. I think this might be the only intact stopper I've found today, Victorian foot warmer water bottle stopper. I'm only really hoping to find a few bits of blue and white here, there isn't enough light left for spotting much else, and sorry to say but I'm down to my last few percent of camera battery life, so I'll say goodbye and point the camera at the sky. Oh, roundup time. I almost always enjoy getting out for a lark. Rarely, though, have I had quite such a lot of fun down in the dumps. The fun, strangely enough, I think started with it actually being painful at the beginning to plunge my hand into icy cold water to grab things. It added a challenge, a battle with myself, to muster the willpower to do it time and time again, and that's not really something I should advocate. Cold water can easily lead to hypothermia, hypothermia to death. I have done a little bit of cold water swimming though and know well my limits, so please don't do as I do. Unless you too are a cold water swimmer, know your limits and have built up good tolerances. Then I found some gold and that escalated things. As many of you may have noticed, I have atypical responses to finding exciting things, as in there's very little sign in my voice that excitement is present, and when finding gold I apparently don't do a little gold finding dance as characters on one of my favourite shows do. That's for detectorists, for anyone wondering. On a side note, I actually wrote the theme tune for these videos trying to channel the feeling of that show. And my girlfriend, the first person I played it to, said, Please don't take this the wrong way, but it reminds me of the detectorists. That made me very happy, more happy than finding gold. But though gold isn't all that exciting for me, finding gold jewellery on camera for the first time is. 
so no obvious indication of excitement, but perhaps there was some indication in all of the words that followed. I think there was a higher level of wordplay and humour in that lark than in most of my mudlarking outings, and it was inspired by how much fun I was having. That is self-assessment, and I cannot possibly be the arbiter of whether or not it was more fun for you or other viewers, only that it was a lot of fun for me. Also, near the end, there was something that approached a spiritual experience for me, wading in crystal clear water reflecting the sunset on the surface, and the sun still giving light enough to see everything on the riverbed where some beautiful fish were hanging out. Right up until I turned the camera on and tried to point it at them, they were as camera shy as I am, and the camera could not hope to capture the magic of that experience. Still, I shouldn't talk it down. It is a great camera for how small, portable, waterproof and robust it is. I think I've rambled enough for now, so on to the finds. Some nice pieces of blue and white. Didn't really concentrate the camera on this one when I found it. Didn't realise that it has a little more than half of an erupting volcano on it. That'll be a nice addition to my craft project. Most of these will be, though I am thinking I might cut the two birds out and they can become part of a pendant. Someday, maybe. I'm approaching the end of the first polish up of stones using my rock tumbler. That's quartz crystals that I'm planning on making some wands with, thanks to Colleen Foster for that idea. These pieces of glass. Well, I'm undecided if they'll be next, or if it's going to be a whole lot of very pretty slag glass that gets tumbled. And would people like to see a video from me of tumbling a whole lot of very different glass types with different properties? I've seen someone else do a video like that for used different colour intact bottles and smashed them up a bit. This would be a wider range of glass, some a lot older. I honestly did intend to put a craft segment in this video. I was going to make the toilet seat, header tank and flush chain for this doll's house toilet and perhaps make another toilet, because Fleur and Kate have several doll's houses now. Unfortunately, deadlines passed, and the work was a little bit more than half done. And in the interests of actually getting this video out this week, and getting another two ready before I go on a bit of a Scotland holiday in two weeks' time, it didn't happen. It doesn't really stand up as a separate craft video, so maybe I'll put it together as a short when I get back from Scotland. The marbles, some beautiful examples I found that day. About a week later I went again, an unfilmed visit with another mudlarker called Heather. I pulled out a lot of lead and my second ever amber marble. Should I perhaps photograph my finds from that day for Instagram? What do you reckon? This handle sparked a strong desire to build a cabinet of curiosities. I've got a lot of projects, several on the go, so it's going to be quite a while, but I am drawing designs for it already. I think I want to incorporate a music box into it that plays my theme tune. I have a lot to learn in order to make that happen. The coins. I didn't think I'd be able to get a date off this heavily corroded one, but I did. 1920. Still not 100% sure what coin it was, but still happy to have found it. I'm always happy to find fossils, and three in a day on that river in a relatively short stretch of it is quite unusual. One in a day was, I think, my previous record there, and that was a walk along the full length of the site, more than a mile of river bank. Only two glass bottles taken out of hundreds seen. That's probably not discipline, I just didn't see more that were appealing. Still, I'm very happy with the two that I did bring home. The Horniman's Pure Tea sign cleaned up relatively well. Think I could get it a bit cleaner before giving the option of it to my friend. I wouldn't dream of just giving it, because a very corroded worn away piece of metal is something I can't be sure he'll want, even if I'm fairly certain he'd like the sign if it was whole. Ok, now for gold. It is not hallmarked. I'm still fairly certain it's gold though, even if I don't yet have any gold testing solution. I think it is 14 carat or under, and I think I might have been wrong. It seems possible that it was a ring. Quite an old style and still a fairly cheap thing. Not a solid band, a tubular one. For silver, that I do have a testing solution for, and it's 925 silver, about 0.85 of an ounce. 
might be a meltdown and make some jewellery from it sort of a find, as is some of the copper and brass. I asked for project ideas and for many calls for jewellery. I'm not set up for it, but I'll certainly give it a go sometime. I'm thinking of starting with a copper bangle, perhaps with some animals embossed on it. Something I can keep relatively simple before trying something far more complex, like an octopus bangle. Imagine a small octopus wrapped around your wrist, but made of copper. That's what I have in mind, not a stylized, flattened thing. And that's for finds. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, and if you'd like to, then by all means express appreciation in whatever way you'd like. There's pressing the like button, or the dislike button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon, writing a comment, replying to somebody else's comment, sharing a link to my videos on another platform. It all helps. I'm contemplating getting a P.O. box. They're pretty expensive here in the UK. About £400 for a year if I went with Royal Mail. So I'm curious to know if there is much active desire out there to send me things. Letters, artwork, treasure. I've done a Q&A video. I could certainly do a post and parcel opening video, occasionally. A big thank you to all of the kind people who've donated through Ko-fi, Super Chats during premieres, Super Thanks on video pages, and purchases from my Amazon wish lists. There is no end to my gratitude. I hope you're looking after yourselves and loved ones as best you can. Thank you all very much for watching, and for now, goodbye.